I think the saddest part is that all this happened and it gave... They're talking about dynamite. They're talking about plan B is dynamite. They're, then they're talking about... I mean, people ask me, uh, what is new here? And, and I want to assure you that none of this evidence has come out. These are confessions of people. These are the... Karta, these are the sutradhars who were doing all this on the no, staff. Neither don't... the Liberal Commission has this. No, I'll tell not you. Not the CBI charge sheet has this. No, I'll tell you something. Where you are saying that You're we did there. this, we went into training camps. You're wrong there. We... Because in the January news track tape of January 93, the month after this That's Ayodhya right. thing, we had a story done by Vikram Chandra in which people with disguised faces, one even with a Santa Claus beard, admitted to, they were from the Shiv Sena, they were from Bajrangal and they were from the VHP. And they gave the details of all the planning that, that you have in, elaborated again. They gave the details of all the planning, how it was done, who was responsible, all the names given. In fact, they went to jail based on that story. Yeah, but and what I'm saying is, the top leadership was still unaffected. I, our story is based... That is true. Our story is based on the people against whom ongoing CBI has been prosecuting them for the last many years, decades, more than a decade, and which is going on in UP. And uh, um, uh, 20 out of those 20, uh, 40 odd, we have 19 of them, and some more are exactly. from the Liberal Commission of Inquiry. So none of these people have ever been to jail. Some have been arrested and have got bail on the matter. And the very fact that they are talking about. You see, this whole larger point that they tried, which was the defense at that point of time, that it was a spontaneous outburst from the... No. Uh, which was the defense that they took in the Liberal and the defense that they are taking in the CBI proceedings, is that it was a larger, which you also know not is true, and, and which we also discovered is not true at all. Because apart from these training sessions, they're also going and talking about consequences about who all were there, who all were taking secret sankal, uh, plan B, uh, what what's Kalyan Singh doing. They, actually, one of them goes on to say that he I was briefing him on a five-minute five basis. Briefing Kalyan Singh and also how, what a strong role uh, Narsima Rao also played. That's right. Where, you know, speaking to people at six o'clock in the morning, morning and asking what is going on and you make sure that it comes down. So the Congress party does not come across That's right. clean and, and actually, at all. They that, were that seriously involved. That is the thing involved. that uh, the BJP should have also, I mean, if, if it was a Congress thing, the first thing you would do is take out the Rao bit. Yeah, so, you know, the first point is that Narasimha Rao was just as responsible from the centre and the in fact ensuring that it does happen because that was where his guru, in fact, was involved in the destruction right on the spot. That's right, that's and what uh, he was in touch Sakshi, with him. Uh, is exactly. also saying, Sakshi Maharaj. Now, you had one erroneous, uh, somebody made a claim that uh, they gave news track a tape of the training programs going on in Gujarat. That never happened. They never Which gave us a tape. Aired. It no, it, it never was, happened. It never happened. What did happen was that at that time, all our footage, every news track tape, had to be submitted to the censor board. That's right. And they would view it. When they viewed this uh, coverage of Ayodhya, they passed uh, an order that it is completely banned. We will not allow it to be seen. So I took that tape to the appellate board in Bombay at that time, now Mumbai. And it was Justice Lenton who headed the appellate uh, board. And they saw it and he passed an order saying that not only should this be allowed, it should be required viewing for every citizen of India. Mm. So that people know what, what, all, was what all is happened. going on instead of... And as you know, at that time, news track was con considered as like a nuisance maverick. We like mainstream media the not mainstream doing at all. Mainstream media was not doing it. They didn't like the fact that we were exposing things which they didn't... They wanted this sanitized version of everything and that was continuing and we were the ones who were showing things which made a lot of people uncomfortable True. and we were not admired in that sense it was by the mainstream media they we were a needle in their um, True. which is a clean part of their body yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, they they did not like it so it was a struggle even then to get the truth out and, and it is a struggle even now. And even now. And even then, the Congress party was not happy with us for bringing it out because they, it was their censor board that banned it. All right? It was uh, constituted by the Congress party, that censor board, who, who banned it. And I must tell you now, privately, that lots of uh, Congress leaders uh, are not happy with this either. This is the information that I have received. Yes, because you've, inst you've relived a great moment of Hindutva, That's which right. actually which was a watershed. Them, which worries them. It was a wash watershed in India where... Everything changed 
after that. Everything changed. The atmosphere, the polarization, the feeling of being a Hindu. What a Hindu means? What does Hindutva mean? I've asked many um, uh, BJP leaders that please define Hindutva to me. And it is a bit uh, foggy. Not, not anyone, not any one of them is... is the definition would never be the way that we have been raised in our families as the definition of what Hinduism is. So it, it would be totally sort of different from that if yes, well, in an organized way Hinduism, they do in that Hinduism, uh, which is now the polarization that is taking place is, that has taken place, is that anyone who is accepting of any other religion, of living in peace, is called secular and therefore does not understand what it is to mean to, to be an Indian. And it, Hindutva has become synonymous with being patriotic, whereas uh, secular means that you, um, uh, you don't understand uh, the ethos of India. So this polarization has, as you know, become worse. Do you think the kind of footage that you have shown makes the polarization even worse? Not at all, because this is a, as far as I'm concerned, what we did was a criminal investigation. You have to leave the religious sentiments aside for a moment. I mean, they would, they but may have been... are they religious sentiments? Not I think at all. they are political sentiments. They are political sentiments, but what I am saying it's, is that uh, even the trappings of... the tool of religion. That's right. But what I am saying is, at its very kernel, at, at its very end, it's a criminal investigation. There were certain people who went there, mass of people, and there was certain sort of leadership, and there were the executors, so to speak, which the CBI also but makes that distinction. But one thing becomes clear in your tapes is exactly this, that the the politicians used it That's as right. an instrument hmm. to gain what they... In fact, they... one of them says, the Gujar... Yes. Uh, that, Two, three of them say that, this. ...that we had done it, we had done jihadi goli type ka pila diya tha humko, aur bana diya tha, brainwash karke le gaye the. Matab, he expresses that sentiment over a long period of time, and he says, Balidani jatte the, hum log bara bara so, Lakshman Sena bani thi, sab log Balidani karke jatta bana ke jao. So this is the first time actually, if you look, this is even... Uh, a pre-LTT suicide squad, so to speak. Yeah. If you sort of look at the time frame. Of course, LTT did start using uh, that element in the but late 80s. But there was 80s. no, uh, you know, I, I think this was a little different because it wasn't a war, it wasn't an That's army, right. it wasn't anyone That's against right. them. It, it, they there was no a, oppression of minorities yeah. or anything like that. Nothing like that. They it just was just went a ahead. political movement in the garb of a religious movement. Yeah. So now, when you look at it in terms of its impact on the elections, what do you gauge? I gauge nothing at all. I think in mass media, the life cycle of a story now is less than 24 hours. Is and it worth it? How many months did you work on it? Uh, months? We, worked, we took years on it. You took years on it. It must uh, have cost you a lot. It didn't cost us a lot. It's as much cost as a reporter running around in UP. Not too costly at all. Uh, camera is not costly. Were you, you able to sell the story to anybody? No, I didn't even attempt to sell a story. To Why someone. not? I did make an attempt. That would be false. But then... In this climate... Nobody uh, wants to touch it. Uh, nobody wants to touch it. So that's the other part of it. And uh, they are all anticipating a certain sort of uh, result after the election. And nobody wants to annoy uh, what their perception of uh, the reality after May 16 is. And uh, it takes a particular brand of madness to be doing all this. And so I guess Cobra you, Post has this brand of madness. How do you cover your costs? Uh, for the last year, a lot of the stories that we are doing now have been done before. So there's no element of because it's all bank stories. So this was a bank story and we just had to revisit it with lots of the same drama persona to sort of relive it and a lot of editing thing. Editing equipment is already there. We work on donations. Last month actually, we the first time we got an ATG exemption. And uh, we'll be, again, we uh, had a whole bunch of donations last year and we hope to improve a lot this year. Uh, from April 10 onwards, uh, going again to people to uh, tell them to give us enough so that we can uh, start uh, get a decent corpus going. But you've dealt with a lot of fallout because of your stories very often, and particularly, say, Operation West End. I know there were numerous cases filed against you and the rest of the team, and some of the cases are still going on. That's true. So um, is it worth it? You're spending your life... I've, I've never sort of uh, ever felt it was not worth it even in my darkest moment, but I do feel that uh, we have broken several barriers, not only in terms of uh, mind space of people, but also in terms of case law that our stories have generated. And, and that perhaps for the people coming behind, it would be much easier. For instance, Newstrack broke a lot of those barriers. 
so we coming behind we also broke a lot of those barriers so i think ultimately it would have a good benevolent effect uh, say five years from now ten years from now and there are some people who have to do it otherwise now anirudh there is also this case right now the atmosphere is such that as you see in the last year any allegation or any accusation makes the person who is accused guilty by the media he's it's always guilty until proven innocent and most of the time nobody is ready to even listen that they could be innocent once an allegation is made uh, do you think there's a degree of irresponsibility i think accusations without any evidence are meaningless and they should be treated as such but anybody coming up with some decent evidence on a scale i mean on, on a good scale should be looked upon seriously the problem is that without research uh, without just uh, opinions passing as accusations uh, are certainly not on and a lot of what we see are half baked opinions are half baked this is ye to aisa hua hoga because aisa tha so without sort of primary information and primary evidence making accusations is totally not done and if some media are doing it they're doing it i mean this are, is what's happening that one person makes an accusation and that person's picture splashed all over the media on television and newspapers and that person is branded guilty and i'll give you an example for example amitabh bachchan during the bofors time was his name was planted by a team which has been attested to by chitra subramaniam that this team that came to uh, europe to they went first to um, uh, geneva then to uh, sweden and um, it was uh, amitabh bachchan's name was planted by two people because he is standing for election so iska iska career to khatam karte hain that is state sponsored now at that time at that time if anyone spoke in favor of amitabh bachchan you were considered naive and stupid and foolish and you're just defending uh, you know the mighty high and Ghost mighty in the wind, yeah. yeah yeah all this sort of the words the same slogans were used that you high profile people you protect each other this your latians culture your pastry culture was up and the fact is that now it turns out that the guy was innocent that the uh, that history the, repeats itself that the bofors guy who blew the whistle is the one who said that his name was planted and he was innocent and it's come 30 years later yeah and, uh, yeah, and i mean grossly should, unfair i mean always making it uh, like uh, that we should be glad that it has come at all okay. but in that sense uh, i mean the way mass media works now it is uh, sometimes uh, kafkaes i mean you can't really but this is what we are in right now there's a lynch mob about there there is a lynch mob i think part of the problem is this whole polarization of media in between political parties and uh, if you wear it on your sleeve for instance fox wears it on his sleeve and therefore in my opinion it is much less dangerous the danger is even though because you are sort of um, dripping entire population with your sort of uh, sometimes right such wing. foolish yeah. uh, positions but you know what their position is uh but then if you're doing it unknown if you're doing it in a very subtle Sarab way surreptitiously which is what happens uh, in india that's right so that's a sort of uh, do you think newspapers or news organizations should de- should declare their support for any particular or uh, party or pre- i candidate? think there's nothing wrong in that i i certainly like the tradi- british tradition of papers taking writing editorials and supporting a particular formation as long as their facts are not poisoned i mean everybody as as we said is entitled uh, to their opinions but facts are sacrosanct but these days uh, i mean you can't have your own facts and then pause in that mosfe i mean facts which are but as we look at it today every news organization almost every news organization is seen through the prism of some political affiliation and some are openly that is so unfortunate that's unfortunate so it has become a really dirty murky atmosphere that's right. that even when straight stories are done it is pinned by that you know it That's has to be I mean, an, first of all let us please make motive. it clear that there is nothing in the constitution or anything in our laws which prohibits x y or z person if if there is x person and all his stories against the bsp the constitution doesn't prohibit it if there is a y person and all his stories against the congress or the bjp the constitution doesn't prohibit but it but your stories are you have been accused of that that I'm most of your stories are against I'm, bjp because i have done lots of stories against the congress as well Which, which people, ones if you look Questions. at the mp's to cash question they were mp mm. if you look at a recent story in december about mp's uh taking money for writing letters recommendation letter there are mm. congress two a congress mp's there mm. if you, if you look at uh, the story that we did in uh, the uid story 10 days back yeah. that was uh, the same bjp with anand kumar uh, uh, fighting against nandan nilekeni went to town with that uid story and and started using it against nilekeni this is 10 days back 
on the day that I think Mr. Nilkeni was filing his uh, sort of nomination a few days around that. And they didn't, the BJP then used that story, but now that the story is against them, they are saying it is politically motivated. If you look at the story that we did in 2010 about Congress MLAs in, uh, in Jharkhand uh, yeah. with money to get uh, uh, MPs into parliament. So there's a whole body of work that you have to see before making those accusations. It's not that a particular story in the last three, four months, there are two, three stories which have hurt you or which you believe have hurt you, uh, that you sort of start picking on them. But that, that's what I'm saying. The messaging, you cannot discredit the facts, so you have to discredit the people who are bringing out those facts. I mean, the, we live in that atmosphere and every media organization has to face it. So what is the fallout you are facing now from this story? Have you had any threats? Uh, well... I mean, threats are part and parcel of media these days, and some are subtle and some are not so subtle. Uh, the uh, larger context of it is that uh, sometimes for a lay viewer or reader taking back and watching the story, they come up with so much noise against the messenger that you are this and you are that and you are this and you are that. It is always and something at the back of your mind, I mean, are there some people who are really believing that? Are there some journalists who are really believing that? But then you sort of discounted it somewhere. I mean, if they are believing it, what can we do? Let them believe that. And then you are forced into uh, sort of uh, getting into corners which any journalist would get into is that now, should I think of story ideas in terms of... Uh, Doing the other uh, side. The other side. Should I think of story ideas in, in terms of, uh, oh, this was a Brahmin, two Brahmins, should I think of now Dalits? Should I think of this? I mean, that is a ridiculous space to get into. Mm. I mean, all of us know that the very... Fa when reporters come up with ideas, you pick up ideas, we chew on them, they come up with 10. And for a small organization like us, we can't chase all those ideas. So we put our resources and one or two ideas. And it's the same for all organizations. They can't chase everything. You chase a few ideas. Now, your bias, if there is any, comes at the very level of choice. At the time that you are choosing those ideas to do. And, and, and I think it's a legitimate sort of uh, editorial decision. If you want to do a story, come on, let us do that. This sounds a more succulent story to do. This sounds a more worthy story to do. I mean, in terms of scale, in terms of impact. And in fact, there would be editorial organizations, editorial teams, which would say that now is the right time to do the story because of impact. Elections, everybody is watching. Let us do this. In fact, there would be even some, and even I have taken this position, that one of the reasons, not the only reason, for us to have done this now is the very fact that the cast of characters on whom there were allegations, on, on, and some of whom were also on our tapes, are also standing for elections now. So is it not the right of the people of India to make the judgment about what these people are about on the basis of the evidence that they have seen over two decades about their conduct and their public positions and what they did. I think it's a moral imperative if you have it. I mean, why should we hide it at the eve of elections? What, what rationale is that? I cannot understand the rationale. So are you going to now balance and compensate by doing a story on the Congress? As I said, I don't want to be forced into those positions. but. If there are stories and which I won't talk about or reporters come to me with stories, we will take it uh, on a call-by-call -call basis. We are not going to get forced into these positions. Well, I remember after you finished your Operation West End and you were going through the Commission of Inquiry and there were so many cases filed against you and I asked you about your family. I said, what are your parents thinking? And you said, they're just praying. So I end this, <laughs> Anirudh. I'm sure they're still praying for you yeah. because you're still doing the yeah. same things. Dangerous stuff. And uh, but you have to also consider. I would suggest that there ko itna junoon ho jata hai story ke upar that you really have to still have a little human element in it to understand ke jisse tum sara kuch bulwa rahe ho uske bhi kuch socho ke uska kya hoega. Okay, ye buriya se ye baat sun lo. Bilkul. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you.